Hey, everybody. Thank you for uh, joining me tonight. Uh, always look forward to spending a few moments with you on Wednesday evenings. I want to encourage you to uh, hit share. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, just hit the share button so other people can uh, see what we're talking about and uh, tune in to uh, the teaching tonight. I want to jump right into it this evening. So if you have a Bible, open your Bible up to Galatians chapter 6. We're going to look at two verses, Galatians 6, verse 4 and 5. Tonight we're going to be talking about responsibility. That's right, responsibility. I know that doesn't sound very exciting, but it's a very important subject. And I think when we exercise responsibility, it can bring some excitement into our life. So let's jump into Paul's writing to the Galatians church. Galatians 6. Paul said, pay careful attention to your own work, for then you will get satisfaction of a job well done, and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else, for we are each responsible for our own conduct. We are each responsible for our own conduct. Paul is writing to the believers at the Galatian church, and he's talking to them about responsibility, and he tells them that you need to conduct your lives in such a way that you take responsibility for your life, your actions. You're not responsible for anyone else. So stop looking at other people all the time and trying to measure yourself to them. We need to measure ourselves to the Word of God, measure ourselves to the example of Jesus, and ask ourselves, am I taking responsibility in my life? Because ultimately, I'm responsible for the words that come out of my mouth. I'm responsible uh, for my relationship with Jesus. I'm responsible for how I function in the workplace. I'm responsible for how I treat other people. Over the years, I have talked to so many different people about so many different subjects. And one of the subjects that often comes up is the subject of personal ability. And people say, you know, I know you want to see people get involved. I know I should get involved. But I look at my life and I, I don't feel like I have much ability. I look over at this person and they seem to have ability. And that person has the ability to do this or that. But I really don't have any ability. And I always want to let that person know that I'm dialoguing with. That all of us have a common ability. And the common ability that every human being has. You have it. I have it is our ability to take responsibility. Let me say that again. We all have the ability to take responsibility. If you look at the word responsibility and just break it down, response, ability, the ability to respond, the ability to respond in the right way, in a responsible way. Winston Churchill said responsibility is the price of greatness. So if we want to have success in our life, if we want to have success in our family, success in our friendships, success in the workplace, if we want to be successful as a nation, we all need to accept our personal responsibility. And here's why. Because we are built for responsibility. Let me say it again. We're built for responsibility. In fact, when God created Adam and Eve, he created them to manage and to shoulder responsibility. They were given assignments. They were given responsibility in the garden. In fact, let's look at Genesis chapter 2. We're going to look at verse number 15. Genesis chapter 2, verse number 15. You see, we're created in the image and likeness of God. So think about this. God obviously is responsible. He's responsible because it's his nature. He is God. So if we're created in the image and likeness of God, that means the ability to be responsible is intrinsically put in every man and every woman. And so that's why I say we are built to manage and shoulder responsibility. In Genesis chapter 2, verse number 15, then the Lord took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to cultivate it and to keep it. So here we read in the beginning when Adam and Eve were created, God put them in the garden, and they were responsible to take care of the garden. God said, I'm giving you this perfect garden, and I just want you to manage it. I just want you to care for it. I want you to be responsible. If we look down in verse number 17, God went on to say, But from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat from it you will surely die. 
So God not only gave them responsibility to manage the garden, to care for the garden, but he also told them to be responsible not to do certain things. You can have access to any tree in the garden except for this one tree. You need to take responsibility not to eat from the tree. And if you decide to be irresponsible and eat from the tree, you're surely going to die. In other words, something bad is going to happen. And you know what? Adam and Eve shirked their responsibility. They ate of the apple, and the rest, as they say, is history. But I want you to notice that when God confronted Adam and said, Adam, what did you do? How did Adam respond? He said, it's not my fault. It's the woman that you gave me. She's the one that gave me the fruit. So he shirked his responsibility. And then when God asked Eve, what did she say? Uh, the serpent, the devil made me do it. He deceived me. So when they were irresponsible and God confronted them about not being responsible, they continued to act in an irresponsible way. It's the proverbial human blame game. Let's blame somebody else for my problems. Let's blame somebody else for me doing what I did. When you look in the scripture, you see that over and over. When Moses went to the mountain, Aaron was responsible to look after the people. The people wanted to build a golden calf. And so instead of Aaron, who is an authority saying no, he allowed them to do it. And when Moses came down and asked him about it, what did he say? You know the people. They're the ones that did it. Not my fault. When you look in the scripture, you see King Saul. He had a, 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 a continual problem of blaming everyone for his personal problems. He blamed Samuel the prophet. He blamed his son Jonathan for all the issues that he and Israel were facing. And Pilate, that's a classic example of irresponsibility. Pilate crucified Jesus. He had the power to preserve Jesus' life or to take Jesus' life. And when he crucified Jesus and gave the order, what did he say? Told the people, it's your responsibility. It's all on you. And he washed his hands of it. Benjamin Franklin had a great quote. He said, people that are good at making excuses are rarely good at anything else. I like that. People who are good at making excuses are rarely good at anything else. So why is responsibility so very, very important to us? Well, I think, first of all, because we're accountable for our choices. I'm not accountable for your choices. You're not accountable for my choices. We are accountable for our own choices. And the Bible talks about that in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4, in the 13th verse, here's what the writer says. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes. And he is the one to whom we are accountable. We are accountable for our choices. We are accountable for our responsibility and our irresponsibility. Now, we can hide something from our friends. We can hide something from our children. We can hide something from our spouse. We can uh, be irresponsible and try to hide it from our employees or, or our boss. But we can't hide anything from God. And eventually, we are going to be accountable and give an answer for our responsibility or lack of responsibility. The second reason responsibility is important is because our choices affect other people. Now, this is so very, very important. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, in uh, verse number 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 6, here's what Paul said. Your boasting about this is terrible. Don't you realize that this sin is like a little yeast that spreads through the whole batch of dough? Our choices affect other people. Now, I know sometimes we don't think that's the case, but Paul is telling us right here. He reminded the Corinthians that because someone in that church was doing something they shouldn't be doing, uh, they were living in immorality. And, and apparently, people in the church thought it was no big deal. People in the church were laughing about it, boasting about it. And Paul said, what are you doing? Don't you realize that that person's irresponsibility 
is affecting everyone, just like yeast affects the whole uh, uh, batch of dough. It's going to affect everyone in the church. Years ago, uh, Billy Joel, you may know of him, he's an entertainer, a singer. He, uh, he sang a song, I don't remember what the name of the song was, but one of the lines in the song went something like this, I don't care what they say, this is my life, so leave me alone. And sometimes that, that line in that song really depicts where people are today. It's my life, I want to do whatever I want to do, uh, if I want to be irresponsible, it doesn't matter, just leave me alone, it doesn't affect anyone else. But that is not true. It affects other people. If I'm irresponsible, it affects other people. Because any time an individual or group of people acts irresponsibly, somebody else has to come along and shoulder the effects of that irresponsible behavior. You just ask a family member, any, any family that, that had a member in their family that was an alcoholic, you ask them if that irresponsible behavior if that dependence on alcohol didn't affect the entire family. They'll tell you that behavior affected all of us. You ask any family that, that had someone in the family that was abusive, that was physically or verbally abusive, ask them if that irresponsible behavior didn't affect the entire family. It did. You remember Bernie Madoff? Bernie Madoff was a big time investor uh, in Wall Street in New York City. And he stole money, embezzled money from all kinds of people. People, honest, hardworking people invested their money, trusting him to get a good return on their money. And he ended up embezzling over 37,000 people in 136 different countries. You ask those 37,000 people if his irresponsible behavior didn't affect them. You see, we can't use that as an excuse. This is my life, leave me alone, I'm going to do what I want to do. Because when I behave in an irresponsible way, it's going to affect someone. My family, my friends, this church, everybody is affected by our irresponsible behavior. And number three, our responsibility is what invites the blessings of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, Verse number one and two, Deuteronomy chapter 28, we're going to look at verse number one and verse number two. Here's what it said. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep all of his commandments that I'm giving you today, the Lord your God will set you on high above all the nations of the world. You will experience all these blessings if you obey the Lord your God. So God promised Israel that if you will be responsible, if you will be responsible to me, if you will be responsible to do what I, the Lord, have asked you to do, I will bless you. My blessing, my favor will rest upon you. I will provide for you. I will protect you, etc., etc., etc. So I don't know about you, but I certainly want the blessing of God in my life. I want the blessing of God in my family. And I, I'm praying the blessing of God upon this nation. But the bottom line is this. Irresponsibility will eat a hole in our soul. Irresponsibility will eat a hole in our soul. And if we choose to be irresponsible, we're not going to be happy. We're not going to be fulfilled. We're going to become the most unhappy, the most negative person we know. Unhappy people are usually irresponsible people. And irresponsible people are always at conflict with God, conflict with themselves, and at conflict with other people. So my friends, let's step up. Let's step up today and accept responsibility. Let's not expect the other person to be responsible and us to be irresponsible. If we all take responsibility we can change what's happening in our life, change what's happening in our family, and we can change what's happening in this country. We need to lead the way. We need to model what responsibility is all about. Come on, let's pray. Father, we come to you tonight, and we ask you to help us be responsible.
We know the ability to be responsible is inside of us already because you created us in your image and in your likeness. So, Lord, I choose tonight to take responsibility for my choices, my thoughts, my actions, my relationship with you, and how I treat other people. And I believe that if we all do that, we're going to see a big change in everything going on around us. So thank you for these moments together tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.